On October 27, 2011, the Office of the Auditor General of British Columbia released a report entitled, BC Hydro, The Effects of Rate-Regulated Accounting. To read the full report and other supplementary documents, please visit our website at www.bcauditor.com. The following presentation provides an overview of the report. As the nonpartisan independent auditor of the Legislative Assembly, the Auditor General is the auditor of the government reporting entity. The government reporting entity consists of ministries, crown corporations, and other government organizations such as universities, colleges, school districts, health authorities, and similar organizations that are controlled by or accountable to the provincial government. Our office serves the people of British Columbia and their elected representatives by conducting independent audits and advising on how well government is managing its responsibilities and resources. Our mandate under the Auditor General Act allows us to conduct both financial audits and performance audits. BC Hydro is the largest publicly owned utility in the province. Its two primary responsibilities are the generation, manufacture, transmission, distribution, and supply of electrical power subject to oversight by a regulatory authority, the BC Utilities Commission, and to ensure British Columbians continue to benefit from competitively priced and reliable electrical power. BC Hydro and government's regulator, the BC Utilities Commission, aim for stability in electricity rates so that charges for electricity to BC consumers are predictable. Prices do not rise and fall with natural volatility of the cost to BC Hydro of producing or having to buy a unit of electricity. BC Hydro uses rate-regulated accounting to defer expenses and revenues to future years in order to smooth out the effects of unexpected costs or windfall profits, rather than represent these fluctuations as expenditures. As BC Hydro has applied to the BC Utilities Commission to have its electrical energy rates approved, Hydro has asked that certain types of costs or surpluses be eligible for deferral. These deferrals have had an impact on reported net income, which has in turn impacted dividend payments to the province. The Auditor General looked at BC Hydro's rate-regulated accounting practices in order to bring to the attention of legislators and the public the significance and growth of costs that have been deferred and their impact on BC Hydro's financial condition. These deferred costs represent dollars that, for the most part, have been spent by BC Hydro and will eventually have to be recouped. Allowing the balance of deferred costs to grow only serves to move the financial burden further into the future. BC Hydro first established a deferral account on March 30, 2000. This account was known as the Rate Stabilization Account. The account allowed BC Hydro to achieve the annual rate of return on equity allowed by BCUC by transferring amounts to and from the account as needed, depending on the projected net income for the year. In 2004, the rate stabilization account was cleared out and government issued a regulation effective for 2005 and beyond that mandated BCUC to allow BC Hydro to establish more specific deferral accounts as required. Over the six-year period since 2005, the balance in these new deferral accounts has grown from $182 million to $2.2 billion at March 31st 2011 and is comprised of 27 different accounts, according to BC Hydro's most recent annual report. By government's own estimate, the balance is predicted to grow to nearly $5 billion by 2017. There does not appear to be a plan to halt the growth of these accounts, let alone reduce the balance. In addition to keeping electri electricity rates stable and competitive, Government requires Hydro to earn a specified rate of return on government's investment in the utility. Provincial legislation requires the BCUC to ensure that BC Hydro rates allow it to collect sufficient revenue in each fiscal year to enable it to achieve its target annual return on equity. 
The province has established that the annual return for BC Hydro be equal to the pre-tax return on equity of the nearest private comparator utility, Terrace and Gas, now part of Fortis BC, plus an annual premium up to fiscal 2012 and just equal to that comparator thereafter. For the year ended March 31st, 2011, the target rate was 14.3%. In addition to meeting the required return on equity, BC Hydro is also required to pay a dividend to the province, its only shareholder. The most recent dividend, accrued for the year ended March 31, 2011, was $463 million. To achieve its target return on equity, BC Hydro needs revenues to exceed expenses by a certain amount each year. For the March 31, 2010 fiscal year, the target return on equity of 13% assumed that budgeted revenues would exceed budgeted expenses, creating net income of $402 million. However, at the end of the year, actual expenses exceeded actual revenues, creating a loss of $249 million before deferrals. To achieve the target return on equity, $696 million in expenses were deferred. This resulted in a final net income of $447 million and a return on equity that was close to the desired target. Expenses that would ordinarily be counted in calculating net income were deferred to future years, as allowed under rate-regulated accounting. The deferred costs arising from these financial management decisions represent dollars that will eventually have to be recouped. Allowing the balance of deferred costs to grow only serves to move the financial burden further into the future. While deferral accounts can be helpful in ensuring rate stability in the near term, over the long term, significant costs deferred today may be unfairly passed on to future ratepayers who receive little or no benefit. This concept of a potential unequal matching of costs and benefits is known as intergenerational inequity. We found that the cost of energy deferral accounts are not being recovered in four to six years. The plan for some deferral accounts is for them to be recovered over longer periods or, in some cases, recovery plans do not yet exist. Compounding the time it will take to recover costs is the interest BC Hydro is paying itself on these accounts. We consider that the current trend of escalating deferred expenses is not sustainable. It is unclear how BC Hydro plans to recover the significant balance of deferred costs and over what period. We therefore recommend that government determine, at the earliest opportunity, how BC Hydro will recover the net deferred cost in its regulatory accounts. Accounting deferrals of this nature confuse the need to achieve legitimate policy objectives with the objectives of transparent financial reporting. Financial management decisions are focused on ensuring the viability of a business enterprise, whereas the purpose of public financial reporting is to serve the interests of transparency and public accountability by describing objectively the results of financial management using an agreed-upon reporting framework. The report highlights what BC Hydro's financial results would look like without rate regulation. This exhibit found on page 11 of the report, illustrates that BC Hydro's income without deferrals was less than the dividend paid to the province in 2005, 2006, 2008, 2010, and 2011. After this presentation, take a look at Exhibit 2 on page 12 of the report. It shows that when the effects of deferrals is removed, BC Hydro's net equity government's investment in BC Hydro, otherwise known as retained earnings, has steadily been decreasing while, as shown in Exhibit 3 on the same page, total debt has been increasing. In the office's view, rate-regulated accounting has been obscuring financial management decisions that have been made because, among other things, it creates the appearance of profitability where none may actually exist. Rate-regulated accounting is currently acceptable under Canadian Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, 
or gap. Going forward, rate-regulated deferrals will no longer be allowed under Canadian GAAP. However, rather than accept transparency that will be required under Canadian standards, government has instructed BC Hydro to adopt part of an American accounting standard that allows for rate regulation. We consider this unfortunate and urge government to reconsider. We therefore recommend that government prescribe that the annual financial statements for BC Hydro be prepared fully in accordance with Canadian generally accepted accounting principles. That concludes our summary of this report. To read this report and our other publications, or for more information about our office, please visit our website at www.bcauditor.com. The Auditor General encourages your feedback on this report, as well as your suggestions for further audits. We look forward to hearing from you.